So what you're about to see is a voiceover video with yours truly doing an arm and shoulder session. My apologies for the lack of videos recently. Working has been very challenging. The old noggin is not functioning the way it normally does. So I've just been very, very lethargic. And um, it's, been, it's been tough the last couple weeks. Uh, I'm getting to a point where the body is fighting back, the mind is shutting down. And um, hopefully in June, I should be able to have a normal upload schedule. So enjoy the video. What's up, Pip Squeaks? Welcome back to the channel. So as you can tell, this is going to be an ultra rare voiceover video. And this is definitely not because I'm really deep into my cut and don't really have the energy to do a normal recording. It, it's for some other reason. But anyway, this has been much requested. This is a full arm and shoulder workout. These are both areas that I have improved quite a bit over the past few years. And so here is a full training session. So we're gonna talk about what exactly I'm doing, my technique, my mentality, my intention, what I'm actually thinking about during the set. So kicking off with the single arm curls here on the cable, we'll get back to those in a second. I alternate these with push downs. Now, I think it's important to alternate. It's just a time efficient way to train these smaller muscle groups. If you're just doing all your triceps, then all your biceps, I think you're messing up. You're gonna to want to alternate the vast majority of the cases. Now you can see, I'm getting a little bit of slop. <laughs> I know how you get like I'm sloppy. I'm letting the elbows go forward just a little bit. Now, some people have called me out on this, saying it's not strict form. I, I don't care. I've tried strict form. I did very strict form, you know, the pump style of training for many, many years. And guess what? I stayed small. Okay, so I find that getting a little bit of cheat involved has been very, very productive. And that cheat, some people might think it's excessive. For me, as long as I'm controlling that negative, I actually find it to be very, very productive. So moving back to the single arm cable curls, these are a fairly recent addition to my training and I really like these. I think as you get older and as you start training more and more years, so eight years, 10 years, 12 years, you do have to think about joint integrity. Integrity. And so doing some of your volume with a variation that is very, very easy on the elbows, I think is a good thing. As you get stronger, it becomes often more and more difficult to get onto a barbell. Whereas with these, you can rotate however you want. So I go to failure, and then I help myself just a little bit on those last few reps. Back to push downs. See, at the start, I'm not cheating that much. These are at least somewhat strict. The elbows are still coming forward. That's just what feels comfortable for me. It gets me a much better stretch on the triceps and that stretch is very, very important. But as I get into the set, as is needed, I will actually cheat more and more. Now, am I saying that you should do this? I'm not saying you should do anything. I'm just sharing what I'm doing, okay? So maybe give it a shot. If you have hit a plateau and you really want to get through that, it could be effective. Start with a very, very small amount of momentum and just, just try it out, see how it feels. All right, this movement, I actually really, really like. I did it because I was cutting and it's lower fatigue. And when you're cutting, you already have fatigue. And so you wanna minimize the fatigue even more. But I like these so much that, that I think I will keep them in when I go back to gaining. Gets you a nice stretch at the bottom. It's a very contraction focused movement overall though. And you can really, really get in connection with those biceps. And yes, I'm actually doing them on a cable row station, which I don't see anything wrong with. You can do them in a normal cable setup as well. You can try to alter the height of the cable. If it's a little bit lower, it's going to emphasize the stretch. If it's a little bit higher, it's gonna emphasize that contraction. Moving back to push downs and again, controlling that negative. That is the number one issue that I see on all movements from most lifters. They're not controlling that eccentric. They're just going right back up to the top. 
the reason we lift weights in large part is to get that eccentric. So even on that last rep, control that eccentric as much as you can. You earned that eccentric. You lifted that weight and so control that eccentric. In fact, that's part of the reason why I cheat. I help myself on the tough part, the concentric, so that I can get more eccentrics, right? These are still tough, grindy reps, and then controlling that eccentric. And I don't want to see you or anyone using reps in reserve on this kind of movement. How dare you? It's a tiny little chunk of muscle, especially for you. And thus the fatigue is just not going to be particularly high. It's very, very safe. And so if you're like, yeah, I do, you know, two reps in reserve on my curls, what are you even doing? I'm not saying it won't be productive, but you're probably gonna hit a roadblock at some point. Just take these to failure. That's the entire point of doing these incredibly safe movements. You can go to failure and then you can keep going, either sort of rocking back and forth to help yourself a little bit on the concentric or using your other arm to help you as well. There are lots of ways to go beyond failure. By the way, this video is sponsored by Boost Camp. They are the long-term sponsors of the channel. They are a fitness app where you can log your progress as well as have access to some of the best programs on the internet. I myself have two programs up there, Rampage and Ravage. One is a three day per week full body training system, which I am currently running. Uh, the other one is a six day per week, also hypertrophy focused, that I have ran for the past year and a half and has gotten me great results. So definitely check out Boost Camp if you want to have access to those programs as well as a whole lot more. Back to the video. Then I moved on to these overhead extensions. I almost always do push downs first just to get the elbows warm. And I think that is part of the reason why I've had very, very few elbow issues, if any, over the years, despite training very, very hard. I'm already warmed up, I'm ready to go. And so when I'm pushing hard on these, there's no issue. Now you can see, again, there's a little bit of slop out of that bottom position, but that eccentric, that eccentric is controlled. I'm probably taking two, three, maybe three and a half seconds, possibly even more on the way down. I'm not counting, but I'm just feeling the triceps lengthen on the way down. Then when I know I'm gonna fail, I can just control that last eccentric a lot, hold it in that sticking point, and just feel that muscle get destroyed. And then later, it, it, it gets big. And I supersetted these with, and by superset, I actually don't mean back to back with no rest. I take, you know, a minute or two just to refocus. I think even for arms, if you're training really, really, really hard, you might need a minute or two just to uh, recuperate and regroup, you know? If you're able to take no rest, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but uh, I think alternating sets are going to be better than super sets. You want that rest in between. On these, again, going to failure or zero reps in reserve, and then adding in these little baby partials starting from the top position. These are super, super effective. And again, it's a very safe movement. There's no real need to use reps in reserve, which is sort of more for powerlifting most of the time anyway. Now, back to these overhead extensions. Again, I took rest in between, and you could see in the beginning, they're fairly strict. You know, if I can do it strict, I do it strict. But when I no longer can, then I cheat to prolong the set. Now, if you are cheating to avoid failure, if you're just cheating from the very first rep, you're just flailing around, that's not gonna be productive and it's actually probably going to be tougher to recover from as well as less productive. So the way I see most people do their training, they're just not getting very much out of it. You can see I'm cheating just enough to still get that slow grindy rep and then I'm controlling that eccentric. The eccentric is, I mean, it's the entire point of why you cheat. So if you're cheating and then just letting the weight drop, first of all, you're compounding all that force into that you know position where it could be injurious, and it's also just less effective. So on these cable curls, the main thing I'm actually focusing on, believe it or not, it's not my arms, it's not my biceps, it's not my forearms, it's actually my core. I'm actually trying 
to brace my core as much as possible. When you're lifting a fairly heavy weight, well, that's a lot of weight out in front of you, and thus, similar to something like a front squat actually, it does require quite a bit of bracing. And so for me, I'm mostly focused on, you know, just staying upright and not folding forward, not letting the shoulders come up, because when the shoulders come up, now you're putting tension on the traps and you're actually taking tension, potentially, away from the biceps. Then when I hit zero reps in reserve, adding in these mid-range cheated partials, if you think the biceps are not active when you're doing this, well, you're doing them wrong. I mean, basically, because you can feel them at, in that mid position when you're really, you know, beyond a failure. And so, you know, give those a shot if you really want to experience a huge amount of biceps fatigue. And then again, moving back to triceps extensions. On these, I'm not doing them like a press. I see a lot of people, they sort of shrug their shoulders up and then they are almost doing it like a narrow grip press. That's not gonna be working your long head, bro. You're not gonna be getting any long head from that. It might be front delt, it might be traps, it might be some other heads of the triceps, but it's not gonna be that long head that we really care about. Also, range of motion is a big issue for a lot of people. You wanna be getting behind the head. Notice that stretch. That is a massive stretch. I'm using a little bit of momentum, enough to get the weight up, and then I'm adding in these sort of partial bouncy reps, and this is still controlled. I know exactly what I'm doing. Someone asked me if this is intentional or if this is on purpose. Yes, uh, I know exactly what I'm doing. It might look random or just flailing around or completely uncontrolled. It is not. I know exactly my positioning and I'm moving with complete focus and intentionality. Just, you know, trying really hard and moving the weight that is not gonna get you the best results. You have to try really, really hard, yes, but your technique still matters. So I am very, very focused on the technique. To an outside observer, that might not appear to be the case, but I assure you, it absolutely is. Back to cable curls here, you can see I hit a sticking point, and you can lean back slightly to get through the sticking point if you need to. Only do it if you need to. You should still be getting some pretty grindy reps. You should still be controlling the eccentric. If you start leaning back too much when you don't need to, your biceps are just not gonna be doing the work. You're gonna be getting the hips involved. If you get the hips involved a little bit, just as much as you need to, nothing wrong with that at all. But again, only if you need to. And I'll be the first to admit, this is some more advanced stuff, okay? Like if you're a beginner watching this and you're like, hell yeah, partial reps, you definitely don't need this and you probably shouldn't even be thinking about this, right? This is some more advanced stuff and I realize a lot of my audience is gonna be beginners who don't need this. This is just something to keep in mind for the future. So in a few years, this might be something that you can attempt. For now, you probably don't need it, okay? So if you're like, yeah man, length and partials, that's what's up, that's what's gonna get me to grow. Well, if you're in your first year or two of training, pretty much anything should be making you grow. So if you're hitting plateaus really, really early, it's not necessarily the length and partials that are gonna be what actually helps, right? It's gonna be your sleep, your, your diet, your stress management, your lifestyle, just your overall programming structure, your overall effort, et cetera. So don't think that, oh, this guy does this and he's jacked, therefore it's gonna get me jacked. Mm, maybe not. Then moving on to these machine lateral raises. Really, really, really like these. I've changed how I've done them. Before I used to get a lot of traps involved. I used to lean back quite a bit. Right now I am entirely focused on the side delt to the point where I can barely move the weight at the end. These are just an absolutely fantastic side delt movement. I like them just as much as cables, I would say. And you can actually get quite a nice stretch at the bottom. So there's still a little bit of resistance down there and it's most challenging at the top, but you can go to failure and then just keep going and going and going. And for me right now, I don't think just going to failure, missing that tiny little part of range of motion at the top is actually gonna be very effective for me. For me at this point, I would say that I actually do need to go beyond failure. But again, that might not be the case for everyone. So if you're adding in 
partials, if you're adding in these isometric holds, and you're in your first few months of training, uh, probably not the best thing to be focused on. So when I'm doing these, I'm focused on, well, cheating a little bit near when I'm beyond failure, but I'm focused mostly on pushing out. So especially at the beginning, I'm trying not to shrug my shoulders up too much. I'm trying to keep the traps out of it and pushing out while trying to almost lead with the elbows. If you lead with the hands and you lean back, it's gonna be mostly front delt and traps. If you wanna build your traps, that's cool. But for me, I find that focusing on the side delts with this movement is just more productive because that's why I'm doing it. So I'm leaning forward slightly, or at least it feels like that. And then I am pushing out, trying to keep the shoulders down. I might lean back slightly at times, but the focus really is on the side delts and pushing out while keeping those shoulders shrugged down. And again, you can go beyond failure. You know, the strength curve makes it very, very conducive for that. And so I think that if you're hitting plateaus on this movement, perhaps not even counting reps and just going really, really hard in the paint might be a good idea. For this type of movement, I've actually decided to not even count reps. I'll just write in how many sets I do and just put forth a good effort. And that for me is enough. Then I moved on to these rear delt cable. <laughs> Sorry, what am I doing? These rear delt cable flies. And these are a somewhat recent addition. Historically, I've done them sort of with the attachments more level, but I think setting them higher is a little bit more productive. So I step back to where it's most challenging in the contracted position, and I just take these to failure. I'm focused on trying to keep it in the rear delts. So again, the traps, all those little scapular muscles, they can take over from the rear delts. So I'm trying not to actually retract or protract too much. It's trying, I'm trying just to move the arms and pretty much nothing else. There might still be a little bit of, you know, shrugging or unshrugging or retraction or protraction, but for the most part, I'm trying to keep it as much rear delts as possible. And then uh, what I do actually is I step forward and I do these lengthened partials. When you step back, it's actually most challenging in the contracted position. Then you step forward just a little bit and now it's actually most challenging in that lengthened position. So you burn them out with the shortened position and then you just end with a damn good stretch. These have been feeling really, really good. It's hard to say if they're building muscle or not. This kind of stuff takes a long time, but they do feel very, very good. They feel very smooth. I can certainly feel them in the rear delts. And so I think these are going to pay great dividends. And I know this is one of these so-called optimal exercises. And to me, it's just a tool, right? I understand why these optimal exercises sort of get hated on. A lot of those content creators are essentially insulting the basics in order to get attention and promote their style of training in order to get acclaim, in order to make money. And so if you are a fan of the basics, I think it's easy to hate on these movements, but, um, you know, try to look at them as objectively as possible. They can have some utility, and I think most people probably should do a mix of the tried and true battle-tested basics, as well as some of these so-called optimal exercises. At the very least, they are something new to try, something to get you excited about training, and they're actually quite a good complement to the tried and true basics, which give you a lot of stimulus, but uh, potentially also a lot of fatigue. Whereas these are a lot of stimulus, whereas not that much fatigue. So bread, peanut butter and jelly, they don't go great apart, but together you get something pretty damn good. And so I think, especially if you're a little bit more advanced, incorporating this style of movement could be a game changer. Finally, I wanna apologize for the lack of recent videos. I am pretty deep into the cut, or at least I was, it's finished now. And um, man, it's tough to work when you're hungry all the time and you're low energy and you're distracted and you're getting three or four hours of sleep a night and you're just destroyed all the time and you're limping your way to 18,000 steps a day. So uh, my clients have been priority and uh, hopefully I should be back to normal content creation schedule pretty soon.
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Hand covers the screen. Boom. Bye. Yeah.